Hello and welcome to Paleo Greenbird. This is Greenbird, and this is going to be another video that I'm going to do uh, for my my good friend Bradley. I did a quick video before uh, on trying to help him nap with limited mobility in your uh, offhand, generally your left hand if you're a right-handed napper, and uh, I sort of got lost in that video and started to nap and kind of lost track of the whole reason for that video. So I want to post another one specifically to point out different things that I think may help him or help him develop his own uh, abilities to uh, increase his grip. So I'm going to just move this camera just a little bit. Not sure how much of this is going to be edited, how much isn't. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wedding ring off and certainly make sure you keep that somewhere super safe. Uh, but it, in all seriousness, the reason I'm taking that off is because any contact with the, with the stone on that ring, uh, you know, could give me some issues. So I'm going to use this piece of Novaculite here that is left over from yesterday. It's a really wonky piece. It's going to need a lot to clean it up. But that's okay. And I apologize for the noise in the background. That's my heater. Go off soon. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this stone is I am going to. Oh, geez. Look for a way to get this as flat as I can. So I've got two options. I've got this here, this big giant ridge. Got this giant ridge here. So those are the two I need to take. It's just which one do I take first? So I'm going to trim this up a little bit. And I don't have a bucket today because I plan on just sweeping. And actually, before I even do that, I So I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a piece off of this, give myself an even better platform. There we go. So you can see I created that low spot. So that was just making a platform. I apologize. Bradley, I still drifted away from the purpose of this video. So, what we know is we know we want to take this platform right here. That, that might be the extent of this video. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but there's the platform. So if you have a hard time with your grip, what I would do is I Make sure your pad's clean. Put that rock in your hand and try and position your palm, if you can, where, where that platform is. Give it just enough support. You're going to have to experiment with that. I, I can't tell you what that's going to be, but just enough support to where you're not getting short terminations, you're not snapping, you're not getting end shock. I mean, even if you can't feel very well in the tips of your fingers, they can still work as uh, support for your point. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. And a lot of what I do is really off the leg. It's not really, a lot of people will nap off the hand, and that's really cool, and I hope to be able to do that too. I'm not that great at it right now, but um, I nap right off the leg. And this bopper is a little bit big for this piece, but I'm going to take it anyway just to see what happens. Flake off of that. And it left me with a pretty good platform. So there's a high spot right here. As I roll over there, if I grind that, that's a pretty decent platform. So I'm grinding 
Rolling Stone. Right down first, and across. Keep grinding until I feel like I got, you know, the grind that I was hoping for. Oh, price sounds down, but all right. I'm gonna build it down because this is way too big of a billet for what I'm doing now. At least in my opinion. I mean, I could use a bigger billet here, but I don't need to. And I'm more comfortable with a smaller billet, so that's what I'm going to do. Oh, there you go. The flake came off of there. Now, like any time else, I'm definitely keeping track of where my thick and thin spots are, because like you can see this piece is a big thick spot right there. Is that picking that up? Yeah, you can probably see that. Yeah, you can see, you can see that shape. It's that big thick spot, that ridge right here, which needs to come off. But we still don't know exactly what this point is going to look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it. So Bradley, if you're having a hard time, you know, gripping, if you're, if you're trimming, what I would say is if you can grab it, do it, and put it on the uh, leather. If you, if you absolutely can't, you can always use your palm. But I think from talking to you, I'm going to assume that you can at least get it in your hand. So I would say for when we're trimming this up, you know, just as long as your fingers are along the bottom here and you're reducing the shock, you should be okay. At least for trimming. So, right here. You'll notice there's a platform there that is just screaming to be taken off. That platform is like, oh, please hit me. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Thin that out a little bit. We need to strengthen it a little bit. Uh, Bradley, I'm not sure how you're going to compensate for the grip and your grinding. Maybe something to do with putting your legs together. You know, if you hold it in this hand, put this leg together, you can grind. Uh, that might be an option. So we're going to attempt to take this platform here all the way down, that ridge. So Bradley, if your, your grip isn't that great, you can easily just have it fallen against your hand like this. Um, I mean, the trick is basically, you, just want, you, know, you probably already know this, but you want to make sure that your fingers and your hand is touching as much of the stone as you can, even just barely, just enough to where you're not going to get in shock and uh, you know, break your piece in half, which is <laughs> kind of ironic because I have a real low spot here or a high spot here, so it's, it's probable I should probably take this big piece first. Right. So this video is all over the place, but that's all right. That's what you get. So while flipping this rock, like what oftentimes happens, I discovered there's a better opportunity for me. This ridge here, I'm going to try and drive it all the way down here. Uh, I don't know if it'll make it all the way there or not. 
but I might be able to fix it from the other side if I have to. So, I would say, again, take your hand, put the stone on there, and then kind of adjust it and let your palm do most of the work, because from what I understand you still have pretty good uh, dexterity in your palm. I'll move a little closer here to see if I can get a little clearer. So I'll take my billet. I'm using a small billet. I could probably build it up a little bit on this, and maybe I should, but I'm not going to. There we go. That's a good flake. So, that worked well. talk about them. Nothing exciting. So I'm just thinning this out a little bit. That's what I'm doing here. I took a few aggressive strikes on the back. Still needs a little bit more work, but you can see it's it's getting a little bit more kind of friendly with the rest of the center line. shape a little bit here. Got this thick spot. I need to take care of this. Just little flakes here. Listen to how that sounds. Doesn't that sound beautiful? It's so glassy. It hits the floor. Really good stuff. I think I got this from Bear Carpenter. Pretty sure. So. I'm just trying to keep things some symmetrical on both sides. So what I'll probably take next is this platform right here. And the reason that I'm going to take that, it's in the middle of the piece, um, which is very thick right now. It's a little bit more towards the tip. And it needs to come off, so might as well take it off now. And so far this piece is pretty big. I don't know if it's going to stay this big or if we're going to end up with a smaller point, but um, who knows. Maybe we have a knife here. Yep, there we go. I'll strike my flake. Let's see, it went almost all the way across, went past the center line. Fur. And now I've got a couple of platforms on the other side.
sorry, I'm not talking a lot. I'm trying to work out a problem area right here. Basically, you had a real thick spot. You start to get like a reverse turtle. So I need to thin that out. Just small little flakes here. This base, though, needs to be addressed. Good flank. Not so much. It's just <laughs> this is as wonky as can be. This is not my best work, but that's okay because that's what happens. All right, let's try and flatten this thing out. Jeez. Got a lot of convexity, I guess, if you were to flip it this way on this side. So it's kind of banana shaped. I need to reduce the mass on the bottom here. So. It's just kind of, um, I don't know, lazy or sloppy napping. One of the two, because that should not happen. I mean, it happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but as you get better, you learn how to control it. Or at least attempt to. So, this side here is definitely much thicker than the rest. This is the part that I need to thin to make that flat. So, that's what I'm going to do. Maybe just a bit more grinding. There we go. You can tell from the sound of that falling to the floor, we got a nice flake. So I'm just going to do a little bit of shaping right now. Let's 
feel flipping if it makes sense because, hey, if I can get the uh, flakes off the side that I need, why not? Get rid of the ugly base there, that's all. Alright. As I'm doing that, of course. Why wouldn't I? I'm trying to set myself up a platform. That's exactly what I did. So I've trimmed off all that nasty base. Got a nice low spot here to try and blast off some of that crap on the front. So let's grind it because it's way too sharp to try and take now. I'd like to get that whole ridge down there. So, again, Bradley, I know this is getting to a finer point, but same thing. Try and keep your hands on the pad, put the point in there, and then let your palm sort of dictate where your fingers are going to end up. You know, that way you don't really have to worry about, uh, rely on a lot of the grip. What you don't want to do is you don't want to smash into your leg because you'll get short terminations every single time. You want to let your fingers, whether you can feel them or not, just let them, you know, make contact with the stone where it needs to. And that's what's going to give you your, um, you know, preferred termination. Which is going to be, hopefully, a nice feathered flake. strike. So I grind again. I don't want to hit on a bad strike. Even worse things happen after that. Alright, so most of my platform is gone. I've got a platform that's over a little bit to the side, but I can still you know, blast off that area if I, if I get it right. Did not do it that time. Okay. So I'm just taking off some flakes here. So I'm trying to keep an eye on this thing, as far as what's thick, what's thin. I'm going from side to side, but check out what I just noticed. So that's thin. Look how thick that is. That needs to come off. That might may interrupt my flake pattern, because 
I'm going to try and go all the way to the tip, but there's also a big step in here, so it could stall. This could be nasty. In fact, I might build it up. Sometimes it's just too hard to be that accurate on a bigger billet, so we'll drop back down. There we go. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to undercut all that garbage that was on there, so that was good. Happy about that. So now that we're getting smaller, do the best you can to just keep a grip of this, Bradley, just so you can do your grinding. I'm not sure if you have any workarounds that you've come up with or anything like that. Definitely share them if you do. All right. So we're already thinning out this other piece of the rock, and this is the, the other piece of Novaculite that we were working on yesterday. And there's still more pieces over there to be worked with and a bunch of stuff on the ground, but we're gonna continue to thin this piece out. During, as we come down right towards the base, there's a big thick spot. So I think I'll address that right now. There is a ridge there. Okay. Again, just Loosely let the rock lay in your hands, put it onto your thigh, and then do whatever you can with the hands, but let your palm do most of the work. Don't want to keep it too close, too tight to the leg, or you get short terminations. Don't want to let it loose or you get an end shock. Make sure you're touching on the tip, the base, all at the same time. I know, it's, it's a lot to, uh, to deal with, but that's what you do. strike. In fact, that might have been two. Always seems to happen after I try and give some sort of like cool tip. It's like the universe going, don't be cocky. Alright. Good flake there. Always got to keep an eye on our center line. does need a little bit of work. <laughs> wow, that worked really great. So, basically what I was doing is I was just trying to straighten out the center line on this. Still a little bit turtled this way. But, at this point, not really a big deal. We still have a lot of shaping and refining to do. I don't expect this point to be the size it is right now. I mean, it could be if I wanted it to be. If I needed a knife, I could easily do that, but that's just not what I'm doing today. Ooh, kind of a low hit. Right, so, 
I'm not going to hit that again. That sound is not good. That crunchy kind of sound. And at this point, I'm hitting this low point, but it's going into a step. I'm not even going to take that. That's just a bad decision. I'll work on something else on this side right here. Try and thin this out. Again, just let the stone rest in your hand. Let your palm do most of the work, Bradley. Yeah, I mean, your fingers will still be there, whether you can feel them or not. Okay. I've got that three strike rule. Now look at that. Piece fell right off. So that piece that just fell off, I had struck the stone and apparently it had just not quite had enough kinetic energy going through there to completely feather the flake, but when I started to grind it, it fell off. See what happened. That's right. That was my bad. It's just just bad support. All it takes is one time forgetting about what you're doing. That's right. Though. We're gonna get a point out of this for sure. Without a doubt. So I'm just shaping a little bit here. Taking the fatter edge, trying to, you know, zigzag it a little bit, but trying to, um, you know, thin out where I know the thicker parts are. I mean, I guess that sounds kind of silly to say because, of course, you're going to do that, but... It's a science when you get into it. sounds. I apologize, I'm not really talking a bunch through this, but sometimes I forget and I get caught up because to me it's, it's extremely exciting to do this. Some thinning to do in a number of different areas. Start with the base. Let's grind. Let's grind again. Alright, so I got two platforms I want to hit. Second one. And both of them sort of gave me hinges, but I think I'll be able to work through that. Those are the hinges that I'm talking about.
So I'm trying to do this as closely as I've been telling you, Bradley, as far as not using my fingers any more than just kind of pushing my palms into them. I hope this helps. And post some videos, man. Just post some videos. That way we can really take a look at what you're doing. Talk about it. Maybe you can post some videos with your cooking. This one's not quite as easy as the one last night. Well, not that that one was easy, but... Seeing. This one has a few different challenges. But it's still coming out to be a beautiful preform. So, just make sure, whatever you do, Bradley, make sure you're just keeping that, that tip touching some part of your hand. That's the biggest thing. That's what's going to prevent end shock. And of course you want to make sure that the middle, uh, usually you want that to be thicker than the tips, the tip or the base. Um, not always the case. Like in this case, I think it's pretty well equal all the way through, to be honest with you. But that's going to change soon. But just kind of something to think about. Nothing's hard and fast. A lot of it is just smacking stone and getting the feel of it and learning what happens when you do stuff. Just kind of trying to trim the edges here. That's my heater that just came on, so I apologize for that noise. it off again. This is why I like napping so much. So the tip here is a little bit thick. I've got some thickness in the base here too, so I want to be careful because I don't want it to get too thin in the middle or I'll get end shock for sure. I think 
instead of taking care of the tip first, I'm going to try and address the base. So I'm going to try and find some platforms where I can take off some of that thickness that's on this side here. I've got a couple. They're kind of poorly ground, but I'm going with them anyway. Go. Just gotta trim this side off here real quick. I'm going to turn this into a little blade. That's what it wants to be. Which is fine with me. Alright. So we got a little bit of a blade going here. Needs some shape, of course. It's not going to that at the end, but just give me a nice little knife. I'm excited about this. I had no idea this stone wanted to be a knife. Right. Obviously I'm going to try and take care of the thickest part of the stone as I can. So I know I want this to be a knife, so I want to make sure that I still keep a sharp blade if I get this as thin as I can. And being that it's a, a knife and not an arrowhead, it doesn't really need to be, I guess, as paper thin as some people will make them. Uh, if you've watched my channel or seen my videos, you know I, I like and I can really appreciate a nice thin point. But, uh, End of the day, if it kills, you can use it a second time. Nope. Really important that you pay attention to your center one at this point. Every time you take a flake, take a look at that stone. See where your center line is. I can still make this a point. But let's stick with the point.
can. Sometimes when I'm napping, the stone just sort of sucks me in. So this is what we got so far. A little knife blade. I think that's what this wants to be. Okay. It's not super thin. It doesn't have to be super thin because it's a knife blade. As long as I get it sharp, which is pretty sharp right now even with just percussion, but if I take some pressure to this, in fact, I'm going to find a special handle for this. Just basically following a continuous platform all the way down here. It's probably not as great of a platform as I should have, but it worked well. So I'm a little bit thinner on this side than I am on this side. But that's okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing over here. We're going to get this nice and thin. We haven't even used pressure yet. This is all just percussion. So I think we're at a point Ooh, I got rid of that huge step. That was amazing. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky. All right, so this is what we have, guys. I don't like to edit these videos, so I'll try and make this as quick as possible, but this is uh, this is the blade that we got. Okay. relatively thin, especially for a blade. It's plenty thin for a blade. It's a little thick up here. 
but I'm not even worried about that. So, this is what the blade looks like. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Bradley, I hope this helped you. Everybody, peace out. Green Bird out.